got pinpoint tears and tantrums that we had over here. <laughs> the falling over in the park and stuff. Literally, Rachel got up, we pushed along, and she headed that was it. She never rode a bike since. <laughs> she ticked the box and done it. Um, you know, she passed the driving test the first time. Now, it's obvious that somebody with a temperament and talent of Rachel that they'd end up in the caring profession. And so she did nursing, as it turns out. Now, I could talk, you know, a lot more about the qualities that make Rachel so special. But I'd like to read out an extract of a handwritten note she received at work earlier this year. Could I please give a special mention to Rachel Hopkins? You're always a kind and good natured person. Thank you for caring for my mum. I will remember it forever. I read about a year ago in John Gates, my old friend and curious. I sincerely wish all of the happiness in the world you deserve everything. Those very simple words actually contain a lot of emotion and sentiment. The fact that Rachel could make such a difference to somebody who's gone through such a difficult, traumatic time makes myself and the rest of us so proud. And so proud of being so caring. <laughs> young woman, she has become. Now, of course, with your youngest daughter, there's always that word boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and our introduction scene is actually quite strange. There's a set of numbers on Rachel's mobile phone bill. <laughs> I remember one month, you know, in the days of when people had text allowances, she'd gone over a text allowance massively. She never did before that, because she was a bottle child. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I said, Nick, Rachel, you've got over text. What's this number you keep messaging? And she went bright red. <laughs> and the rest they say, it's history. <laughs> now, it's clear that Nick and Rachel we sorted each other. And I remember, I think it was the summer after they met, they went to Thorpe Park and they had a photograph taken, each sent us a photograph. And those are the people that know Rachel, know she's not, she doesn't always like having a picture taken. But there was something different about this photograph, a spark that I'd never seen before. She was happy, she was smiling, she looked so comfortable and relaxed. And I thought then when I saw that photograph, hmm, this guy might be right for her. And Nick has gone on to prove it was right. In some ways, he's quite similar to Rachel in the deep down. He's quite a sensitive guy. You know, they've bonded over their mutual love for soft toys. <laughs> <laughs> and that probably explains the pet habits. <laughs> now, you know, Nick has grown into a fine young man. And, you know, he told me several weeks ago he was actually buzzing to marry Rachel. He couldn't wait. So, Nick. You're a credit to Julie and Dave. Um, and whilst you felt like a member of the family for several years now, we're very pleased and proud today that we can call you our son in law. It's quite traditional at this point for me to give a few pointers to the group. <laughs> but you know, Rachel and Nick have been living together for a couple of years now. Um, and all that time, you know, I had to, as I mentioned earlier, I had to bail Rachel out quite a bit. I've had to come to the rescue quite a bit for the past two years. Whether that's Rachel flooding in the bathroom and subsequently the kitchen, <laughs> block drains, block toilets, um, rabbits nibbling through various cables that I've had to repair and replace, um, the lawnmowers <laughs> breaking down. But one particular incident springs to mind. Like <laughs> Late one evening, I was just about to go to bed and my phone rang. Dad! And Rachel was laughing actually. I could hear Nick moaning in the background. <laughs> We've locked ourselves in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that the bedroom door was playing up. So instead of just leaving it, like you know, any sensible people would, Rachel decided the way to fix the door was to force the handle and close it. And of course, that actually shattered the surrounds of the spindle and you're locked in. <laughs> so of course, being a great guy I am, I went up to the garage, got my tools, walked the five minutes to their house. Now, 
quite a regular occurrence to be late at night walking across the house with tools in their hand. I'm surprised I'm not being pulled over by the police. <laughs> uh, and I proceeded to free them. Uh, so, Nick, um, I have checked your room tonight. Your room is fine. But I have got a little something for you, just in case you find yourself in a similar predicament. That's what I've done now.
Mom and Dad have done an amazing job producing an incredible son. <laughs>
met. Um, so me and Nick first met back in college about eight or nine years ago. Um, for those that didn't know him then, he was fairly quiet and shy. Still is a bit now. Um, but to be fair, Nick did find a way to cope with it. Uh, some people have to do their work, they work hard, they actually get up uh, every day, go to college. Others there like to sit on card all night, try and level up on the Xbox, ask their naive and gullible mates, can I have a look at your work? <laughs> <laughs> Sends it over, says he won't copy any of it, keeps all the pictures and words in exactly the same place. Gets up the next day, called into the uh, tutor's office, got to start that unit of work again. I don't know if I've ever said thanks for that, pal, but uh, yeah, cheers. 